All right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick Strength and Power. So we've got a lot of interesting bodybuilding stories to cover today. I know this weekend has been um, kind of a whirlwind of distracting stories, um, especially with the whole Sean Roden thing going on. And we're going to get to the Sean Roden thing a little bit more towards the end of this video. Um, but first, I want to cover some of the more recent bodybuilding stories. So this weekend, there is a big bodybuilding pro show, and that is the Vancouver Pro obviously up there in Canada. So one of the most interesting parts about this Vancouver Pro is the fact that Hadi Japan had confirmed that he was going to be competing at this Vancouver Pro. Now, Hadi, he's an interesting guy. He's an Iranian bodybuilder, and he's had trouble getting a visa to come compete in the United States, specifically to compete at the Mr. Olympia. A lot of people would really like to see how Hadi would be able to do on the Olympia stage. He's taken second to Flex Lewis, at the Asian Grand Prix, he's taken second to guys like Cedric McMillan, Rolly Winkler in open bodybuilding, even though he's a 212 bodybuilder. Um, and that's what makes this Vancouver Pro so interesting is Hadi Japan, a very dominant 212 bodybuilder, um, is competing in the open division at this Vancouver Pro. Um, and the interesting thing about this is this time he actually did get his visa and he is in Canada right now for the Vancouver Pro. So in the past, he's announced that he's competing in shows um, and for whatever reason, didn't get visas to actually wind up competing there. But this time he is in Canada. He is in Vancouver and he will be doing the Vancouver Pro this weekend, hoping to qualify for the Mr. Olympia. Now, this is exciting to a lot of fans of Hadi Japan um, because the assumption is if he's able to get his visa to Canada, which is also in North America, um, people are saying there's a higher likelihood now that he's going to be able to get into America, the United States, if he does in fact qualify for the Olympia by winning a show like the Vancouver Pro. And many people think if he does qualify for the Olympia and he does compete in 212, he would be the next 212 Mr. Olympia in the absence of Flex Lewis. Now, in the absence of Hadi Japan, I think the next 212 Mr. Olympia would likely be Derek Lunsford. But if Hadi Japan shows up, I think there's a high probability of Hadi winning the Olympia. So the other interesting thing here is you have Nathan Diasha in this show. You have Ian Vayer in this show. Two pretty big names in men's open bodybuilding um, going up against Hadi Japan in open bodybuilding. So the interesting thing here will be if Hadi wins a men's open bodybuilding show to qualify for the 212 Olympia or to qualify for the Olympia in general, will he go open or will he stay in 212? If he goes to 212 by winning an open show, I think that probably gives him more momentum than most in the 212 division um, for that Olympia because beating big name open guys like Nathan Diasha would be a massive feather in his cap and a massive deal of momentum going into the Olympia. And I do think Hadi has every ability of winning a men's open show like this and beating men's open bodybuilders like this. I think Hadi is just that good. Um, and I think it's very exciting to see that he actually is in Canada and will be competing. I think the results of this show will be not today, Saturday, but I believe they're going to be Sunday. Um, so stay tuned on this channel because I will be posting the results of that show, obviously, um, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. So I am excited to see the Vancouver Pro. So the next thing that I wanted to touch on here is in the absence of Sean Roden, could we see Phil Heath make a comeback to the Mr. Olympia? Um, for the past several months, it's been speculated that Phil Heath might be making a comeback. He might be training. He might be dieting for a comeback. And recently, he made an appearance. He's doing like a UK tour right now. Um, and he posted some stories, or there were some stories posted of him hitting a front double bicep and a most muscular, where he looks to be in pretty good shape at this point, which actually today is about nine weeks out from the Olympia. Um, and now with the whole Sean Roden thing, specifically Sean Roden not being allowed to compete at the Olympia, speculation now is higher than ever. Why wouldn't Phil come back and try to get that eighth title when the guy that beat him last year isn't going to even be allowed to get there? And the guy that took second to Phil in 2017 namely Big Rami, who was previously Phil Heath's biggest threat, is not going to be there either. So the Olympia is really wide open this year. Um, and I think the probability now is higher than ever that Phil would do the Olympia. But I guess we'll see um, on the day of the Olympia. I really want to see what happens with this Olympia. It's going to be a very interesting one. Um, and really, if Phil doesn't compete, Rami doesn't compete, and Roden don't compete, that Olympia title is wide open. It is going to be a battle at the 2019 Mr. Olympia. And just like Monica Lewinsky, it's about to go down. Now, the next story that I have for you guys today is about Lee Priest. Now, a couple news videos ago, we talked about the fact that Lee Priest was recently visiting California. He was doing some training seminars out there. 
And while he was in California, he was training at Gold's Gym Venice. And while he was training at Gold's Gym Venice, he was charged a pretty high amount of money um, to train there for one week. So Lee, I think, and a lot of other people were probably a little bit surprised that Lee Priest would have to pay anything um, to train at Gold's Gym Venice, considering the fact that he is a bodybuilding legend. He used to train at Gold's back in the day. And the fact that Lee Priest came to California to train at Gold's Gym Venice um, is only going to bring a lot of positive publicity for Gold's Gym Venice. Um, but for whatever reason, when Lee Priest went to Gold's, he was charged to work out there. Now, um, everybody kind of raised a big stink about this on the internet. Um, and Lee Priest recently kind of got vindicated for this. So he posted this photo on his Instagram uh, from the general manager of Gold's Gym Venice. The post says, hello, Lee. My name is Jeff Sunder, and I am the general manager for Gold's Gym Venice. It came to my attention yesterday that you were charged the day fee on a visit over the weekend, and I apologize we did not roll out the red carpet for your visit. I'm working with our marketing department to create a Gold's Gym VIP card for you, which will allow you and a plus one entrance to any Gold's Gym around the world. Please send me your mailing address so we can have the card sent directly to you. Um, and I look forward to meeting you in person. And please let me know if you need anything in the future. Thank you. So I do think this is kind of refreshing to see. And a lot of people would make the argument that Lee um, should pay his way like everybody else. Now, that might be true in a commercial gym or whatever other scenario. But Gold's Gym Venice, um, the entire reputation of Gold's Gym Venice is built on the history of that gym and the history of bodybuilding and the bodybuilders that train there. you got to keep this in mind. The legacy of Gold's Gym Venice is there because of who trained there. It's not the gym. It's the clientele of the gym, the pro bodybuilders, the legend, Arnold Schwarzenegger, um, the golden era of bodybuilding at Gold's Gym. The legacy of Gold's Gym is the people that train there. So when you have a guy like Lee Priest who helped build that legacy come to train there later on and he's charged to train there, it seems a little bit ridiculous. I mean, I don't know if they do or not, but... I would guess they probably don't charge Arnold Schwarzenegger to train at Gold's Gym Venice. Now that's a little bit more of an extreme example, but the point still stands. All right, so the next story that I have for you guys today, we have a major update on Kirill Tereshin, aka the Synthol Kid. Now this time, Kirill actually seems to be really serious about his health, um, and this time it appears he's actually trying to do something about the situation with his arms. Now he's filled his arms up with oil, but now he is begging for a special procedure in the UK to actually have his arms drained and attempt to save his life. Now, he's trying to raise money um, to get this procedure. I believe it's 37,700 uh, pounds. And reportedly, all of these injections have caused tissue fibrosis and necrosis. And now that his health is severely affected, um, he apparently collapsed while shooting a music video recently. And now he recognizes um, kind of the danger that he's in and he wants to get this surgery. So I guess he's launched some kind of fundraising campaign to try to make the money um, to get this procedure, which I guess equates to about 3 million rubies um, over there in Russia. Now, I'm not going to encourage you guys to donate to this fundraiser because he has kind of a history um, of posting some deceptive posts and not really being the most honest guy. So I'm not going to encourage anybody to donate to that fundraiser, but I am interested to see how this plays out. If he does, in fact, raise those funds, if he's actually going to get this procedure and we're finally going to see um, the era of Kirill Tereshin, the Synthol Kid, come to an end and maybe come to a positive end. And maybe he's seen the error of his ways, which um, I really hope it has a happy ending because honestly, I never thought it would. So best of luck to Kirill Tereshin. I hope he actually does get the procedure. Um, and I hope this is actually something he's serious about. And he's finally realized that his health takes priority um, over having these ridiculous Popeye looking arms. Now, the next story that I have for you guys today, Ronnie Coleman is training and he is relentless with it. We've seen the past couple weeks. Um, he posted that leg press video when he first got back in the gym. He posted a video training back and biceps. Um, and now he posted this video shrugging where he actually looks pretty damn good. So we know that Ronnie is trying to rebuild his physique and get back in the gym after all these back surgeries that he's had, um, which kept him out of the gym for a very long time. I think about six months um, he wasn't able to train at all. And it says in the caption he's trying his best to have as much fun as possible in the gym um, and really just get back to looking like he works out, which I think he has already achieved that. I mean, Ronnie Coleman, the genetics of this guy are just insane. The fact that he had all these surgeries and all these injuries and he was out of the gym for half a year, not training at all, to jump straight back into it and still look how he looks now. I mean, it's, it's pretty incredible the genetics that Ronnie Coleman has. Um, even though it's unfortunate, all the things that happened to him and all the injuries that he had and 
the fact that he lost his mobility a little bit. You can't deny the guy is impressive. He's, I mean, he is a motivational story. So best of luck to Ronnie Coleman uh, getting back to training, and I hope he's able to recover his physique to whatever point he hopes to recover it. Now, the final story, before we get back into talking about Sean Roden, um, I mentioned this in a couple news videos ago as well, that IFBB Pro Juan Morel's daughter was missing, and she's actually still missing as of the time of recording this video. Um, so I want to share this post with you guys again. I'm going to encourage anybody who has seen this girl um, or anybody who thinks they saw this girl in this area to try to help find her um, and contact this detective or contact Juan um, and try to help Juan find his daughter. So the post says, no updates on Destiny. She is still missing. Last seen in Deer Park, July 10th. I can't thank everyone enough for all the reposting and sharing. I believe in the power of numbers. And through you, she will be found. Please continue to share and text photos to everyone. Post also says, missing child. Her name is Destiny Morell. She is 17 years old. Her hair is brown with purple undertones, brown eyes, approximately five foot, four inches tall, weighs approximately 125 pounds, tattoos visible on right arm and back of shoulder. If you know anything that could lead to her whereabouts, please contact Detective Dennis at 631-854-8178. So it really sucks to see a situation like this, but it really is encouraging to see all the pro bodybuilders and the bodybuilding community as a whole really come together and repost this and try to help find his daughter. I think that was actually encouraging to see. Um, so I'm, I'm more than happy to be a part of that and try to help Juan Morel find his daughter. So the final story, if you guys haven't heard, I'm sure pretty much everybody in the bodybuilding injury has heard, but let me get you guys up to speed because there's been some minor updates to this story. Sean Roden over the weekend had some very serious charges levied against him, um, and he actually had a warrant put out for his arrest as a result of these charges in the state of Utah. Um, these charges apparently happened back in 2018, or the incident itself allegedly happened back in 2018. Um, but for, for whatever reason, he is just being charged now. Now, this story has been picked up by TMZ. They have basically put all the updates on the page. Um, the fact that Sean Roden has been banned from competing at the 2019 Mr. Olympia as a result of these charges and also won't be able to compete in future Mr. Olympias, um, supposedly pending the outcome of this case. Um, they also posted an update about his bail, which has been set for $750,000. Um, and they also updated their story to mention that the woman who is accusing him of these crimes that came to Sean Roden's hotel room um, where these crimes allegedly took place. That woman, they, they added to their story, is married. And Sean Roden is also married. So I think that adds an interesting dynamic to this story that we didn't really realize before because this woman's identity has not been released, which I think is probably good because she'd probably get a lot of ridicule based on what I've seen in the comment sections of some of these videos. Um, but I did not know prior to this that she was married. So that's an interesting addition to the story. And another thing I wanted to mention here um, is a lot of people, I saw a ton of comments about this. If this happened in 2018 or allegedly happened in 2018, why is it just happening now that Sean Roden is being charged and that these allegations are being made super public now, right before the Olympia? I want to clarify that apparently this woman went straight to police after this happened. So this was not a case where this woman waited until now to go to, to go to the police. She didn't wait a year later. She didn't wait eight months later, whatever the case is. Apparently, she reported this right after it happened. And we know this because of the DNA. They found Sean Roden's DNA apparently on and supposedly in her body. And obviously, they wouldn't have found that evidence eight months later. Um, and also, Sean Roden would have had to provide a DNA sample at that time um, unless Sean Roden was already in the DNA database, which he probably would have had to have committed a crime to be in the DNA database. Um, so this was being investigated for a very long time is what this suggests. So to me, this isn't a case where she waited until the last minute. She reported this right away, and I think it's been investigated for the past eight months. And they wanted to wait until they had a very solid case to make these charges public and to actually file these charges. And to me, the $750,000 bail suggests that they probably have a pretty sufficient case to believe that Sean actually did this if they're wanting to hold him that badly. And also the fact that they investigated it for this long would also suggest to me that they have a pretty uh, solid case against Sean, the fact that they ended up filing charges. So as more information comes out on this story, I will keep you guys posted on this channel. So make sure you subscribe if you have not subscribed already. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And as always, Nick Strength and Power.
Signing out.